Inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning, or induction, is reasoning from a specific case or cases and deriving a general rule. It draws inferences from observations in order to make generalizations. Inference can be done in four stages. One, observation, where you collect facts without bias. Two, analysis. Classify the facts, identifying patterns of regularity. Three, inference. From patterns, infer generalizations about the relations between the facts. And four, confirmation. Testing the inference through further observation. In an argument, you might derive a general rule in an accepted area and then apply the rule in the area where you want the person to behave. Give them lots of detail, then explain what it all means. Talk about the benefits of the parts and only get to the overall benefits later. Take what has happened and give a plausible explanation for why it has happened. Inductive arguments can include part to whole, where the whole is assumed to be like individual parts, only bigger. Extrapolations, where areas beyond the area of study are assumed to be like the studied area. And predictions, where the future is assumed to be like the past. Here are some examples. Say this and not this. Say, look at how these people are behaving. They must be mad. Not this. Those people are all mad. Say this. All of your friends are good. You can be good too. Not this. Be good. Say this. The base cost is XXX. The extras are XXX plus tax at XXX. Overall, it is a great deal at YYY. Don't say this. It will cost YYY. This includes XXX for base cost, XXX for extras, and XXX for tax. Say this. Heating was XXX, lighting was YYY, parts were ZZZ, which adds up to NNN. Yet revenue was RRR. This means we must cut costs. Not this. We need to cut costs, as our expenditure is greater than our revenue. Early proponents of induction, such as Francis Bacon, saw it as a way of understanding nature in an unbiased way, as it derives laws from neutral observation. In arguments, starting with the detail anchors your persuasion in reality, starting from immediate sensory data of what can be seen and touched, and then going to the big picture of ideas, principles, and general rules. Starting from the small and building up to the big can be less threatening than starting with the big stuff. Scientists create scientific laws by observing a number of phenomena, finding similarities, and deriving a law which explains all things. A good scientific law is highly generalized and may be applied in many situations to explain other phenomena. For example, the laws of gravity was used to predict the movement of the planets. Of course, when you find a law, you have to spend ages proving it and convincing others that it is true. Inductive arguments are always open to question as, by definition, the conclusion is a bigger bag than the evidence on which it is based. In set theory, an inductively created rule is a subset, superset, of the members that are taken as the start point. The only way to prove the rule is to identify all members of the set. This is often impractical. It may, however, be possible to calculate the probability that the rule is true. In this way, inductive arguments can be made to be more valid and probable by adding evidence. Although, if this evidence is selectively chosen, it may falsely hide contrary evidence. Inductive reasoning thus needs trust and demonstration of integrity more than deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is also called generalizing, as it takes specific instances and creates a general rule. Let's take a look at inductive fallacies. Inductive reasoning uses a move from specific instances to general rules. Inductive, or generalization, fallacies fail due to breaking the rules of this form of reasoning. 
there are three main inductive fallacies. The first is composition. That is where you are generalizing from a few to a whole set. Then there is false analogy. X has property Y. Z is like X. So Z has property Y. And then there is hasty generalization. Generalizing from too small of a sample. So that's it for inductive fallacies and inductive reasoning. We will cover fallacies more in class at a later date.